I'm back. How's everybody doing? It's me, Julian, from the Vanilla Gorilla Kitchen on Wednesday. Today is a somewhat of a relief today. Um, thank you, first off, for everybody reaching out, um, asking me how I was doing, asking me if I'm okay. Um, kind of a shitty week last week. Uh, I had a friend pass away, um, and then uh, my dog actually had to go to the, uh, to the vet and get some work done. He had to go to Club Med and got the tip, just the tip, of his tail uh, removed from those tumors and those masses so they wouldn't spread and uh, you know become dangerous for him. He's doing good now. He's dope to the gill. He's higher than a kite. Um, you know, he's, he's feeling color at this point right now. He's on some good drugs. Um, so he's hiding away. So I got my dogs out here now so they won't, you know, hopefully mess with him too much. I'm trying to keep him separated so he doesn't bust open his tail. He's got stitches. Um, he had to have two little things removed, one little piece of his tail, and then he had another little thing on his chest. Or not on his chest, I'm sorry, on his shoulder that he had to have removed. Um, so thank you for everybody that has reached out and asked me um, and sent well wishes, prayers, you know, kind words. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, but today, that's in the past. Um, we're going to set this off right. I'm doing this a little early because I am starving. Uh, I have not eaten, um, you know, correctly in the last few days. Maybe one or two meals here or there. What's going on, Stella? Today we're talking bulgogi fries. Now, bulgogi is a Korean marinade or a Korean sauce. Um, really big and, you know, it's th think of, uh, think of like a teriyaki, but with spice. It's got a uh, gojujang, which is a fermented chili paste. Um, it's outstanding. Um, and that's in there with some soy sauce, with some brown sugar, with some salt, um, vinegar, green onion, lots of garlic, um, lots of ginger. I'll show you what it looks like. Now, when I do something like a marinade, uh, I'm going to do it uh, about 24 hours to 48 hours ahead of time. That way it just penetrates all the meat. Get your mind out of the gutters. It's only Wednesday. We're not talking about anything other than these marinade penetrating flat iron steak. Right? That's what this is. Flat iron steak. Now, I cut that by hand with a knife. So it's, you know, it's about as thin as I can get it. Don't mean to get that close to you. It's not that early yet. Um, but a good tip to do, whenever you got steak and you want to cut it really, really thin, throw it in the freezer. Or if it's frozen already, um, take it out ahead of time. You know, give it like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and then you can slice it really, really thin. The colder the meat, the easier it is to slice. Um, what's going on, Kristen? Um, what, first off, what are you guys eating tonight? Like I told you guys, we're doing bulgogi fries. So bulgogi beef, marinated. It's got goju jang, soy sauce, brown sugar, garlic, green onion, some ginger, uh, salt and pepper, a little bit of oil. I mean, that's been hanging out for about 36 hours now, 24, 36 hours. I can't remember really, you know, everything's starting to blend in really. Um, and then we're going to do a couple things. So we've already cut some fries, right? But don't worry, I'm going to show you guys how to cut fries. Um, I usually use a little fry press or a, you know, fry, you know, fry cutter, fry blade, whatever you want to call it. What's going on, Brian? That's what I usually use, but I'm going to show you guys how to do it by hand because a lot of people don't have this and it's really easy. Plus, you know, a bag of potatoes, $3.99 a pound. I use russets, um, you know, really simple, right? So if you noticed... This potato is going to roll all over the place. I try to cut it. It's going to move and end up coming out with a finger missing, right? So let's just take the top or the bottom or the left or the right or the side to save that because we'll actually use that, right? That way, no more rocking, right? Now, it's all dependent on how thick you want your french fries, right? Now, I've showed you guys how to make french fries before. So uh, it's going to be about the same concept. We're going to take those top and ends off. The same concept. We're going to blanch them in about 295 to 300 degree oil. And that will help cook the inside of this potato. So it's not just fried on the outside and dead, dead raw on the inside, right? So, like I said, I want them about that thick, right? So I've got them going to sit over here in just a little bit of water. I think my dog just got a piece of that potato. She eats damn near everything except 
Uh, she's not a big fan of lettuce for some reason. She'll eat it, but she's uh, a lot like me. I don't like to eat lettuce unless I absolutely have to. Uh, but, yeah, this what it is. So, I got these, and I'm going to set them in some water, right? That's to clean them. I already cleaned them off, but it's still kind of dirty. But potatoes, they grow on the ground. They're really, really filthy. So, I'm going to let those hang out. Also, you throw them in water so they don't turn brown. Now, another thing I like to do as well, uh, I like putting or making salty water for the for the potatoes that it's sitting in. It helps draw out all that internal moisture and it's gonna make a very, very crispy fry. Um, I got that idea from uh, Ricky due to Cross the Pond, which means UK, um, and uh, that's how they do it over there when they do those chips. They do those really, really thick French fries that we could call French fries, they call it chips. Um, and the salt water, like I said, draws all the moisture out, right? So you're gonna get left with a very, very crispy French fry. Now, when you're doing this, you want to generally do it a few hours ahead of time. You don't need much salt. Um, for every two to three cups of water, maybe four tablespoons worth of salt. Just enough to get it a little salty. You don't want it to, to get too over salty, right? And that's it. You let them hang out. You rinse them a couple times, and you do it again. Um, these ones have been soaking right now for roughly about two and a half hours. Um, and we're going to go ahead and start frying those. So I'm going to show you guys what we do with fries first. So... I don't mind this little setup. So, like I said, a little hungry, a little shaky. Haven't really eaten the last couple days. So we're gonna take a nice handful of fries, right? Now, water and oil don't mix. So I've got another bowl over here. It's got my little strainer. So it's gonna get any excess water off, right? Now you can see, see, you got a flaccid tater, right? Now this is that fresh cut. This is that one that's been sitting in water. So it's taking all, all that moisture. It's gonna crisp up real nice. So like I said, we've got our oil set right here, about 300 degrees. Now a little water's gonna get in there, it's not that big of a deal, but drop it and walk away. All right. Those are gonna go for about four minutes or so, and I'm gonna lift them up, I'm gonna crank the heat up, and we're gonna go from there. All right. So I'm gonna show you guys something that uh, I don't know if it's gonna taste good. Um, in my head, everything goes together quite well because all the flavors kind of marry together. Um, execution wise, don't know, but we're going to figure it out. Um, but I think all these things will go together because it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that from, uh, different sandwiches, right? So like I told you guys, bulgogi beef, um, it's a teriyaki, but spicy, the fermented goju jang, um, which is a fermented, uh, red hot pepper, um, paste almost. And you can get it at most stores. Now you can get it at Asian markets for sure. Um, you know, so get it. It's delicious to cook with. It's great. Um, I actually made uh, just a goju jang aioli. That's what we're going to do on the top. Now, aioli in French means garlic. In America, it just means flavored mayo. Um, and that's just goju jang and mayo. Sugar, salt, and a little bit of white vinegar. A little rice wine vinegar, I'm sorry. Um, you know, so play around with the ratios as far as that goes. I like a little bit more spice. I don't like blow out your palate spice. Um, it's just, it's, there serves no purpose. Nobody wants to shit fire, shit lava for, you know, a couple hours. What's going on, Jamie? Um, so it's all on your personal preference. And salt, sugar, and the vinegar help balance everything out. So you don't want super sweet. You don't want super heat. You don't want, you know, super fat. You just want everything to meld together. And that's all that really was, right? So I've got some pre-cut carrots that I had the other night, right? It's just julienne carrots that I have. And I'm going to show you guys... A very very quick simple and this is the part where I said may or may not go good but we're gonna figure this out I had a thought in my head the other night where I was like man that might sound really really good now this pickling of the uh, the carrots and the cucumbers right this is actually from a another sandwich it's a Vietnamese sandwich called a banh mi right so they have these great like onions that's about as thick as I want it. They have these onions and carrots and these cucumbers, right? And radishes that they will go and they will pickle. Right? And they'll throw it on top of a sandwich. You got some chicken liver mousse in there and, you know, a couple other things on a nice real springy bread. Right? So we've got our mandolin and we took it down to about level two, maybe three. Right? I want them about the same thickness as the carrots. Right. Now, if you guys don't like cucumber or you have indigestion by cucumber, try peeling it. Um, when we were doing our classes in culinary school a long time ago, 
um, and a few other things that I've had over the years. Everybody says if you peel a cucumber, you don't get that those cucumber burps. And we're going to take these and we're going to save these and set these off to the side because that's about all I really want or need right now for cucumber. Got a, got a friend coming over in just a little while, so make her some dinner when the wife and kid gets back and then she comes back over. All right. and the next thing we're going to do is because we're going to finish this with green onion. Right? I love green onion. Now, I'm going to show you guys a fancy way to do it. I've showed you guys before on how to make your, your green onions look sexy, look pretty. just means you, you know what you're doing or you can charge a couple couple extra bucks. Right? Let me get rid of these notifications real quick. Right? So you see, I took it and I already cut it across. Right? I want to make a bias. You can make it as deep or as shallow as you'd like. Right? So this first cut, I'm just going to make everything even. Right? And then go as thin as you possibly can. Sharp knives always work better. And keep it on an angle. If you want to think about it, think about your blade tip and the handle of your blade going at like 11 to 5. That's about the angle you're looking for, right? Love green onions. Spring onions, green onions, ramps. They're really great if you just toss them in a little bit of oil, salt and pepper, and hit them on the grill really quick. 30 seconds at most. You know, if you don't want to do the grill, throw them in a cast iron, dry cast iron, get a little char, right? Now, green onion, let me actually get you back on the screen here. Green onion, you can go down as far as you want. Right? I don't mind the whites, but when you're doing presentation, you really only want, let me get my little rag over here, you only really want the green, right? The white tends to be a little bit more bitter or more pungent. Save these. Now, with these, you can actually take these, you see the root system right here, you can actually take these and set them in water, and they'll regrow just like that as the time comes. So don't throw away the bottoms, unless you just don't want to, you know, grow them, which is perfectly fine. It's, let me get some smaller bowls real quick. It's perfectly fine. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to save them. I try to keep as much as possible. I don't want to waste you know, this shit's expensive. Not green onions, they're 75, 79 cents, 75 cents a piece. But, you know, food in general is so damn expensive. Um, you know, so, and you don't really want to waste anything. There's flavor in all of this stuff we're doing, right? So those are going to be our toppers. We've also got some black and white sesame seeds, untoasted. And that's also what we're going to toast, or that's what we're going to finish our bulgogi fries with. So let's go back over to our fries real quick and see what they're looking like. Beautiful. It's actually a little bit darker than I want them to be, right? But that's okay. So we're going to crank that temperature, right? Usually I'd like it about a light brown color, about the same color I like my, uh, sorry about that, like my garlic whenever I'm toasting it, right? So we've got our carrots, we've got our cucumbers, we've got our green onions cut, and I'm going to show you a very, very simple, very, very quick, you know, wouldn't call it a pickle, wouldn't call it a marinade, I wouldn't call it, you know, uh, a vinaigrette because I'm not really going to add oil to it. But I'm going to show you how easy and what I'm going to toss this in. When I had this concept for this, for what I was going to toss the fries in, because bulgogi's been done, everything's been done food wise. So now I'm just picking and choosing different things that I like from different dishes or different cultures or different ethnicities and bring it into one, right? So I got the French fries, I got the bulgogi, right? I already told you what that was the flat iron steak, tossing all that stuff, hanging out for 36 hours. Then we got the carrots and the cucumbers. I'm going to toss in a vinegar, if you will, a seasoned vinegar. Um, and it's, we're just going to use simple rice wine vinegar, a little salt, a little black pepper, a little sugar. That's it. That's all you really need. And I'm going to toss those fries, right? I had this con I had this idea. It's like, man, I, I like, you know, salt and vinegar chips. Um, this might give it a tang. You know, whenever you're making food, you don't want something super hot, super sweet. You know, you don't want something that's just salty, you know, unless that's what you're going for. That's what you're into. Um, you want everything to marry. You want everything to be harmonious. You want everything to taste like it needs the next thing. You don't want one overpowering the other. And I had this idea where like, man, I can get the tang from there. I get the salty from the fry. I get the sweet and the heat from the aioli because it's got a little sugar in there. And there's sweetness in carrot as well. Um, and then you got the green onion, the sharp bitterness of green onion or the sharp bite of green onion. Um, and then the bulgogi, which is just fucking delicious. Probably the only one I say F word, but hey man, it's Tuesday. I almost said it's Wednesday. It feels like Wednesday. I'll do a video for you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow is uh, fresh tortillas and fresh enchilada sauce. So I'm going to show you guys both how to make those. Um, and that's for Christopher Buxton's birthday. I'm going to start doing uh, two people a month. Uh, 
If you guys have a birthday in June, please comment below. And I'm gonna reach out to you. If I, if I can't get a couple people, I'll just start picking and choosing from people and say, hey, when's your birthday? Hey, what's your favorite dish? Now, I'll do a live video for that one. And depending on your dish, um, I might have to do a couple uh, videos, uh, just depending on the prep that goes into it, because I'm not gonna sit up here and do a six hour video for you know, insert dish here. Um, so if you guys have a birthday in June, you guys have a birthday in July, if you guys have a birthday in August, greatest month out, um, especially August 13th or something about that day, um, tell me what your favorite dish is along with your birthday. That way I can tag you in the video so you guys can see my, or my rendition of your dish. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, also, what do you guys eat tonight? Tell me in the comments below. Don't forget to share this video and I'll show guys a picture at the end, right? So let's make this vinaigrette real quick or seasoned vinegar, if you will, right? So we're just gonna take our rice wine vinegar, right? And we've got maybe a quarter cup, right? Now we don't need much. Now this won't really dissolve, right? So we're actually gonna season this, but we'll also season about a, let's go a little bit more, it's Tuesday. black pepper, and some sugar, right? And that's pretty much it. We'll, we'll mix it up, and that's what we're gonna toss our veggies in right before I toss my fries in the same bowl, right? So this isn't gonna dissolve because this all this is cold room temperature. So we'll actually season, you know, the cucumber. Always season, always season, always season whenever you can, right? So we'll actually season the cucumber and the carrot as well. That way everything's kinda you know, copacetic, everything's kosher. Not in the sense of, you know, being Jewish kosher, but everything kind of right? So that's about all I want. You want that, that vinegar punch to it. Rice wine vinegar is generally a little bit sweeter than most. You know, it doesn't have that, that tenacity, if you will, um, of a white vinegar. Um, doesn't have the sweetness of, you know, a balsamic vinegar. Um, you know, it's, it's got its own little flavor, but it's huge vinegar in a lot of places in Southeast Asia, Asia in general, you know, places like Hawaii use it too, because there's a huge Japanese contingency there, as well as they've adapted everything around that area, the Pacific Islands and everything like that. So I encourage you guys to get out there and try different, different, different stuff, like different vinegars, um, you know, different sauces, different stocks, different this and that and everything, because you don't really know what you'll like. So you might as well just try it all, right? Worst thing you can do is not like it, and then you just don't either do it again, or you know you find somebody else that knows what they're doing, so they can give you a little little tip, you know, a little tip of Rooney, right? So that's it for our seasoned uh, seasoned vinegar, right? So the next step is going to be our fries are probably about that level, right? So we're gonna drop them one more time, all right? And these are gonna crisp up. Now I will do it again. Um, I'll probably, you know, pull them up right before it's ready. That way they don't get too crunchy. My wife likes fries. Pretty much the, the, the consistency or the texture of potato chips. Almost no potato really left into them. It's like a potato pocket almost, if you will, or a potato cloud. That's how, how crispy she likes them, right? Just something that's very, very light and crispy, right? And like I said, this is that flat iron steak, right? I love this cut of meat. Um, it's fairly inexpensive for about two pounds. I got this about two pounds. Um, I think it was sitting about $5.99 a pound. Outstanding steak. Um, had a lot of the same characteristics of, you know, a flank or a skirt steak. It's got, you know, it's got some, some, uh, what's the word? Can't think of the word. It's got some texture, if you will. It's got some moxie, right? It's, it, it'll hold up to a lot of good flavor. And like I said, all that's in this is soy sauce, brown sugar, goju jane, garlic, ginger, green onion, salt and pepper, and oil. Um, I think that's pretty much it. And a little bit of white vinegar because I wanted to balance it out, um, you know, so it's not, you know, so sweet, so heat. I want, like I said, I want everything to, to marry together. I'm gonna take these fries out here in just a second. All right, so let's crank this temperature up. This is super quick. You can take this and think about it this way. This is almost like a cheese steak just without the cheese and with a whole bunch of different Asian ingredients, right? I encourage you, find a place that does bulgogi. Find a place that does banh mi. Great restaurants out here. Um, if you live in the Central Florida area, there's quite a few places um, 
that I've had throughout the years. Um, I'm not going to name any of them because I can't really remember their names. I haven't been down that side of town in a long time. Plus, these last three months, kind of food name game is kind of escaping me. Right, so we're going to get this real hot. Get a nice sear, like a nice char, almost like a fajita char, right? Then we're going to add some butter, sauce it out, mix it all together just so it combines and gets real saucy and real thick. And we'll top our fries with this, right? Um, another thing you guys can do, you can actually add, don't mind, uh, that's my sous chef down there. She's eyeballing everything I do right now, right? Uh, don't worry. I'm not in a restaurant, so I can touch my dog. It's my food. I'm eating it, so I don't want to hear any comments about that bullshit. Um, you know, so, but that's my dog. That's Ollie. She's just hanging out. She's usually a person that gets up in the, you know, middle of the night with me and listens to me talk and would sit here and watch cartoons and we eat food at two o'clock in the morning, you know, cook a pound of bacon or so. <clears throat> Sorry, just hit puberty. My voice cracked. Uh, you know, so she hangs out with me all the time. You might see Diggle. He's my male husky running around here somewhere. Probably getting into shit he's not supposed to, but it is what it is. Like I said, it's Tuesday. It's bulgogi fries and uh, having a good time. Right? Now, another thing that I, I don't know if I've told you guys before, but whenever I do beef, whenever I do pork, whenever I do chicken, whenever I really do anything, I try to temper it. Temper it just means set it outside, not outside, but outside of the refrigerator, outside of a cold area. Um, for 30 to 45 minutes. Now, depending on the thickness of a steak. Mainly, I like doing it with steak because you get an even cooking temperature. Um, you know, it sticks better. You don't have a whole bunch of cold, you know, through all these different spots in the steak. So, best bet, let it sit out for at least 35, for, uh, 35 45 minutes ahead of time. That way you get a nice, even cook, right? So, pan's almost there. Right? So, I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time in this pan. Longer I cook this, tougher it'll just get but it's not going to be very very tough because there's acid in there there's that soy in there so everything's kind of broken down over that 36 hours right um if you don't like you know this type of stuff this steak is outstanding i do another i do another marinade let me see if i can get you out of there it's not so much of a lens flare uh, i do another marinade where it's more of a you know i don't want to say mexican because it's not really i guess it maybe is i don't know um, it's just a whole bunch of different, you know, ingredients that I've thrown together and found that really works great, especially with this cut of meat. Um, outside, or uh, flank steak as well, um, the skirt steaks, the flat iron steaks, this marinade works great. Um, and I take a shit ton of cilantro, like two bunches of cilantro, um, oil, garlic, orange juice, and lime juice. However, I just did it with orange and a pineapple juice that this is standard, like Tropicana type of thing. Um, works fantastic. The acid and, and the, uh, the citrus breaks down the meat um, and it helps become very, very tender. It's great fajita, um, great fajita marinade. So if you guys are looking for a fajita one, that's usually what I do whenever I want to stay, you know, more Mexican or more Spanish, Hispanic, Spanish style. Um, that's what I usually go for is that type of marinade. And of course, salt and pepper, almost everything I do um, and shit ton of garlic, right? All right, so let's get back to this pan, right? So like I said, that bulgogi. Yeah. So I'm only gonna take a few, a few seconds. I turn that back on. All right. That's not gonna take long. Right. You want to get a nice little char on it, right? But be wary when you're trying to get a char on something, and it's got sugar in it. The likelihood of you burning it is very, very high if you do not pay attention, right? A lot of sugar in there. There is a lot of garlic in there, so it'll become a little bitter, but it's okay. A little brown garlic in Asian style foods is okay. Let me go ahead and get my other pan of palm. Right. You can start to see. That's the char I'm really looking for, right? So I'm actually going to kill this heat. I'm gonna add a good knob of butter, right? About two tablespoons worth. I'm actually gonna take it off the heat so that butter doesn't burn, right? And like I said, this is gonna thicken it real well. And this is cut so thick, or so thin, I'm sorry, that it's not gonna, it's not gonna take long to cook for one. Just a second. It's not gonna take long to cook for one. Uh, and you kinda really want, it's, 
very difficult to go really, really thin um, and get anything other than, you know, like a well done, medium well type of thing, but that's okay. We're not, you know, going for a medium rare steak here, right? So we'll let that hang out. So let me get a bowl. Just slide this down, put this back here. We'll get a bowl and then we'll start plating. Like I said earlier, if you guys got a birthday coming up in June, uh, July, August, September, whatever your birthday is, just hit me in the hit me in the comments on this video alone or the pictures later, um, and uh, we'll go from there. And I'll pick I'll pick a I'll pick a dish where uh, I'll do you guys a favorite dish, and it might be over one or two videos throughout the day, so I can show you, you know. Uh, I can show you guys the entire process, right? Um, but I want to start getting you guys more interactive into this, right? So we're going to take these fries. Always, 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 always drain off your fries, right? Usually I wouldn't use a glass bowl because glass holds heat very, very well. So let's go ahead and put this back on here. Now, a lot of people will take this and do, you know, um, They'll do, shit, kind of lost my train of thought there. All right, looks weird, I know. Let me show you guys what looks weird, right? So we got our cucumbers, we've got our carrots, right? We've got our seasoned vinaigrette, right? Just a little bit, not much, right? Just to give it a little flavor. And we got, of course, our salt and our pepper. I always like tossing my uh, fries in salt and pepper. You know? If you guys don't really, it's too small a bowl to be doing this, but we'll make it work. Right? Clean up my little mess here. Should have just got the bigger bowl, but you know, stubborn and whatnot. Right? So let's go ahead and toss it this way. Right? Now this is a good point in time right here to try a French fry. Mm. It's delicious. Right? So a little bit more salt. A little bit more of our seasoned vinegar. A little bit more pepper. All right. So let's go ahead and take those french fries, that cucumber, right. that carrot, salt, that pepper. Right. Right. A nice little mix. Go ahead and get our bulgogi. Actually, let's do it one step first, right? So, like I said, that goju jang aioli. All it is is goju jang and mayo, rice wine vinegar, salt, pepper, a little bit of sugar. That's it. And we've got the star of the show, right? Our bulgogi. Now, if you guys don't like raw carrot, you can actually toss your carrots in a little bit of salt about 15, 20 minutes ahead of time. It's a salted carrot. And like I said, it'll take out most of the moisture in the carrot and it won't be as crunchy, it won't be as raw. Right. This is our green onion. Right. But we're not done. Let's throw a little bit more of this aioli on there. Right. I think it's almost as like a sexy ketchup mayo. Right. A little bit more green onion because I love the hell out of green onion. And that's pretty much it, guys. Bulgogi fries. But let's make sure we don't be hacky about this shit, right? Let's... Wipe down our plate, right? If you wouldn't serve it to your mother, why would you serve it to a guest? It's serving me, so it's perfectly fine. Shut it off on you. Thank God it didn't end the live stream, right? So that was it, guys. That was the bulgogi fries with an aioli, a seasoned vinaigrette, and some cucumber and carrot. Kind of like a banh mi, right? As far as the pickled carrots go. Let me, it's actually a little too dark in here for that. 
Don't want anybody to get all tangly in their no-no parts while I'm trying to talk to you guys about bulgogi. All right. That was pretty much it. Thank you again for checking on me, my family, and my dog. I appreciate the fuck. That's the second one. The fuck the third time out of every single one of you that did that. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. I appreciate it. Tomorrow, fresh tortillas, fresh enchilada sauce. Uh, might do chicken, might do pork. Haven't really decided yet, so I'll play it by ear. Right? Um, Friday is back with uh, fried chicken Fridays. My favorite thing in the world to eat. Um, and that's pretty much going to round it out for this week. Um, like I said earlier in the video, if you guys have a birthday next month, this month, still time in this month, I've only done one for the month of May, hit me with your birthday and your favorite dish. I'll take care of you. If I pick you, I'll take care of you. Um, and we'll kind of go from there. Um, still no word on the shirts yet. I have not received an email back, so I don't know if this place has started back up. I would like to think it is, um, but they were super smashed when uh, I asked them you know, a few weeks ago before they closed down. So I'm still working on it. So please don't, if I took your name down, um, I haven't taken any money yet. So all this money is getting paid by me. But if I did take your name down, uh, I'm going to put the order in as soon as I can get, you know, some kind of person over there to answer my phone calls. Um, and I'll see you on Wednesday. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe, and follow. There's a blog. Many recipes are on that blog. Go check it out. Subscribe to that. One day that might make me some money. Um, don't know if it will. Might. I keep reading articles about people reading and uh, posting the blogs and food blogs and whatnot. And, uh, you know, apparently they can make money off this. I haven't seen any money out of it yet, but hey, it is what it is. I don't do this shit for the money. Eventually I will. Um, I do this shit for fun, right? So get out there. Cook. Tell me, tell me guys what you guys cook today. Share a picture. Share a gift. Share it with a friend. Share it with a family member. Thank you again. I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for spending some time with me, and thank you for checking in on me. Bye-bye.